End of the line for the West Somerset Railway, but the start for us, Neil. It is, we're going bikepacking, Blake. But this time with a difference, I've convinced you. You have. Because it's March, I've convinced you not to rough it. We're not camping. No, we're not eating grubs. No, we're, we're doing a two day ride. We're riding out to a hotel, riding back, basically bicycle touring, but on proper bikes. And thanks to Fidlock for kitting us out, we are ready for a good two day adventure. I'm ready, Blake. look at that. I can smell them from here. Yeah. yeah, you can't smell leather, Neil. Which way, mate? Uh, right. This way. That way. X more. Start. This two-day adventure starts from the North Somerset coast in Minehead and up into the Exmoor Hills. Beautiful views, epic moorland trails and wooded single track are in abundance. It's going to be just over 50 kilometres and 1400 metres of climbing to get us to the hotel in Dolverton. You can find this route on the GMBN commute page if you fancy giving it a go yourself, link down below. Just don't make the same mistake as us with a leisurely start time of 11am, it's worth getting going early. First little village, beautiful thatched roofs, very quaint British countryside village. First hill down, down there. There's Blake. Down there. We've ridden that before, Blake. I forget how hard that is. You go up how many meters? 248 meters. 248 meters in about a kilometer. So you come straight out of town up the hill. It's a big hill. Yeah. But it's beautiful up here. And now we sort of head along, heading west for a few miles. Which way? <laughs> that was ridiculously fast, that. Neil's on a fully rigid bike, and oh man, it was a bone shaker. I reckon we should pull over, yeah. have a little snack, talk through our bikes. All right, I'll give you a quick kit check. I'm riding an Orbea Alma. It's absolutely the lightest bike I've ever ridden. It's lighter than my road bike, it's crazy. It's fully rigid, 29er. This is like an XE race machine, but it's also, I think, the ultimate bike packing machine. I can't believe how fast this thing is, even loaded up. Because we're not camping, I don't have a sleeping bag or tent, so actually, super lightweight. I've pretty much got my clothing and my sort of toiletries in the back of there, a bit of extra riding kit up front. Also, I've got the advantage of having a super clean triangle because it's hardtail. I've got loads of space inside it. So I've got the big 800 bottle on the front and then a 600 there to pack in plenty of water and keeping it super lightweight. I feel like I'm a bit casual for riding a bike this fast, but it's the ultimate bike packing setup, I reckon. This is my Orbea Oys. Now, I went for the full sus. To be honest, this is my, this is my dirty little secret. No one knows I've got this bike. I love riding it and I like going long distance. Now, I'm using it for bike packing, luxury bike packing. We're gonna stay in a hotel, <laughs> yeah. Um, so with a full sus, I had to adjust the bottle sizes. Like Neil's gone for two massive ones. I've gone for a 450 down here. I'll explain why I've got these soft ties here in a minute. And I went for a 600 mil on the front here. Uh, then I've got this little toolbox, snack box. This is just full of snacks. You can stick this thing wherever because I've got these soft ties again. Um, I've got this boa system because this is an essential for me. I don't want to carry shoes. 
so I can carry my essential sandals. Look at that. Boa system built in here. You can put whatever there. You can put a banana. I wouldn't recommend it because it could just cut it up. Anyway, that goes there, just like that. Fanny pack full of goodies, stuff here. Oh, one thing. I've got this cool phone case from Fidlock as well. And this little uh, tripod system. So when we stop by a river, crossing, whatever, I can just stick it up, do a selfie right through it. Right, these soft ties are actually quite incredible because you can mount whatever, wherever. And uh, luckily I had two of these, one for my snack box up here and one for down here for my water bottle. And I'll explain why, look at that. Can you see that? On my uh, negligence, I uh, snapped this bolt in there, so I've rounded it off. So I've got my work cut out when I get home. But luckily I've got these things, so I can just put one there, pull that really tight, just like that. And it's got these cool little hooks and voila, I've got a bottle cage and I don't need to uh, worry about snap bolts on my beautiful boys. Right, that is, that's something else. It's like, it's like riding in treacle, this grass. The slowest field ever. So soft. 854 meters already. Yeah, I can see one big dark red patch. We drop down and then we've got one big climb. It looks like it's that over there. And then that's the highest point of the ride. Or well, the lowest point, however you see it. Climbing. Just climbed up this one and introduced with this view. Look at that. That's incredible. But I say it looks incredible. We have to go down that, then up it, and then down it, and then up the next one. We've got three more climbs to go. Neil? It's tough, isn't it? I'm oh. tired now. It feels like we're losing the light a bit as well. Well, yeah, we've only got like two inches. Two, yeah, two inches, which is two hours. <laughs> two hours. Yeah, I think we have actually got two hours. Climb there was tough, but we've been saying that all day. We have said that all day. We've uh, come off track a bit in this course, we need to find our way back over that way. And we've got quite a long, mellow descent and a couple more kicky hills to get back up. Hi, right, well, I've had my last chocolate bar, <laughs> so <laughs> it better be close. Well, it's not that close. <laughs> Head, Neil. Yeah. Is that where we're saying? Five heads up. We finally made it. Oh, my legs, my arms, my arms. Yeah. Day one, we've got to go back that way tomorrow. You didn't say. You didn't. You didn't say that, did you? <laughs> you didn't say we've got to go back. 
You first. Did. A well deserved pint in the bar, some food, and a good night's sleep. Breakfast was incredible. Now it's just time to get just get dressed up and leave. But the best thing, right, is I didn't sleep in a tent last night. I slept in a bed. And I can brush my teeth and I don't shower. And there's some benefits to staying in a hotel. Nice. Epic day for it. Look at this. We've got a few miles to do. Neil's been shopping. We in the co-op. Got a bag full of goodies. Thanks, Neil. Time to load up, fill our water bottles, and fill up my snack bag. Because this little guy here is a lifesaver right now. Lifesaver. The sign that says home. Mine head. It actually doesn't say home, but that's where we're going to be heading. It's by the van is part. It is. And a couple of miles. That's just a few. Just a few miles. With full tummies and aching legs, we head back over the hills, at least this time knowing what to expect. There's a couple of small tweaks to the route, but it's mostly the reverse of what we rode yesterday, finishing with the descent back towards the Bristol Channel. This canyon we're in. <laughs> Crazy deep down there. Proper steep climb, now much further we've got to go, but it's been very hard work getting up this far, so let's hope it mellows out. Wow. Just finished our cream teas. What a beautiful day for cream yeah, tea, right? Amazing. Right, little stats for this bridge right here. The Clapper Bridge, or the medieval name is Clapperis uh, for this bridge right here, meaning pile of stones. Each flagstone on top weighs one to two tons. There's 17 spines on this bridge. There's actually not a known date to when this was built. It was made by the hobbits, the, Frodo. Could, 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 <laughs> That's medieval, I think. We've come to the, the tar, tar bridge and uh, we want to get a really good shot of us riding across this bridge. So we sent AK cameraman Jack. Hey Neil. Into the in, Into the abyss of water. Look at him. Oh, it's freezing. He wants us to go really quick because it's very cold, but I mean, I'm not in a big rush. I'm not in no rush, Neil. We can just let him be and then his toes fall off and float down the bridge. <laughs> Blake loves camping, but I woke up this morning in my warm, dry hotel bed, used the bathroom, walked downstairs for cook breakfast. I just thought, why do you ever camp? <laughs> uh, I'm lying, actually, I do like camping, but in the middle of summer, I like camping when I've got my van. And it's still a bit cold, like, you know how dewy it would be in the morning. It's so nice when you're in a hotel room. I think this is my new favorite way to do bike packing. A hell of a spot down here. Right down by the river. Couldn't ask for any better weather, but there's something to say, right? No matter what kind of season you're in, if you get a nice break 
in the weather where it's been a little bit dry for a couple of days, take that as an opportunity to head out. Because it's been raining here yeah, for a while. There's been a break in the weather and we thought, hell, let's go for a bikepacking adventure. Maybe stay in a hotel because it's a bit chilly still. But you get to ride some incredible trails where there's no leaf cover and everything's just like brighter in the woods. And the ground is nice and firm as well. My life, every single one of these hills is really tough. It's all sort of back in the middle of the woods, working our way sort of between little rivers and brooks. Yeah, tough, bumpy old roads. Whew. Oh, they're definitely not short of hills around this neck of the woods. Next mile, we sort of uh, filled up with some water at Parvinex Ford. And we've got, well, that's one of the last hills. We've got three more to go. We've done a lot of climbing, to be fair. There's about probably 300 metres of climbing left. But we're sort of running out of light. It is quarter past four. Still quite early now. I guess we've, we've sort of another couple of hours, I suppose, but it feels like the day is running out on us, and so are my legs at least. Right, put on hill, Blake. That's it over there, Neil. Well, right the behind that's us. The last hill, bad news, quite a big one. It was big. Anyway, I'm stoked with my setup. The, the fully rigid bike feels great. It's the lightest bike packing setup I've ever had by a mile. Just feels a bit sketchy following. When I, can't, I need to see where I'm going to pick a nice line. Yeah, do you know what? Following you is more of a comedy show because the back end is just so tail happy. It's, it's ridiculous. Funny, isn't it? we, gone, we have gone light. I've only got a big sort of coat in there that I've not even used. I got the Fidlock stuff. It's super clean, isn't it? So it's cageless system. So I didn't realise how this worked until I tried it. But look how clean it is on your frame. So you twist them off, and then when you get them near, the magnets just grab and they clip. Yeah, so no bottle cages. Looks super clean. How about your setup? You didn't even need to run a front bag. I know. I normally carry my tent in the front here, but we stayed in a hotel, which was uh, quite luxurious. Um, <clears throat> I've gone for the soft ties. Luckily for uh, user error, I snapped that bolt. And without these things, I wouldn't have a bottle there, stuff. I've just had one. So There aren't actually that many water stops on this ride either. No, so there isn't. So we had to carry quite a lot. Yeah, saved my bacon there. And then I've got this system up here. My, this is actually my snack box. But Neil, this little guy right here, this little tripod with the phone case. Selfie king. Oh, I love it. Really good. Got a tailwind. Shall we crack on? No. Can we just stay here and just look at it? It might come closer. Finish off the long ride uh, with some epic climbing. Climbing out, yeah. it's so good. You know you're coming down to sea level. Right. I can smell the ocean. You can see the ocean. I can smell a cup of tea at that little restaurant down the bottom here. A few more descents. Don't know why I'm tired. We're going downhill. All right. See you at the bottom.
I'm glad we got here before four o'clock p.m. because that place is shut now and we've just had the last latte that that person will ever serve today. Today. Oh, I think I need three more of those. I'm absolutely shattered. We've done about 100K. In two days. And like two and a half, no, about 3,000 meters, 3, actually. 3,000 meters of climbing. climbing. That's big. So we've ridden all sorts. Yeah. In the woods, some moorland. And some bogs. Yeah. And some really fast, fun descents. Anyway, we're back at Seaside. The sun is setting in the west and we're done. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for watching. Leave us a comment down below as usual. Have you enjoyed us going on an epic weekend? And tell us where you're going to go, because you should do it. It's wild good fun.